righteousness in the sight of the Lord, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, because it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. We're looking at uh, Romans chapter 6. Transparent righteousness. What kind of righteousness is that? Romans chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 6, verse 16. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, a servants ye are to whom ye obey. If you're always thinking about man, what do they think? What will they say? How will they look at this? You become the servants of men. You be like a puppet. They tie a rope in your leg. And then they'll be pulling you here and there. You'll not even be a man of your own. You'll not have a man. You'll not be a man of your own decision. A man of your own life. A man that you will be responsible to. Here is what I'm going to do. If I'm wrong, I'm responsible. If I'm right, I'm responsible. Here is what I'm going to do. If it comes out well, I'm responsible. If it doesn't come out well, I'm responsible. That's a man. That's a woman that says, here is who I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve the Lord. Whether they accept it or not, that's not my problem. But I'm going to serve the Lord. And this is the direction in which I'm going to go. Whether the people, whether they appreciate that or not, it doesn't matter. They might be gossiping about you, slandering you. What does that matter? The slanders of men, the comments of men, or whatever they say behind, even if they say it to your face, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is this is what God wants. And you're obedient to the Lord. But if you are all the time, you're always thinking, I want to please that, you'll be a servant. I want to please her, you'll be her servant. And you know, those of us who are married, you before you got married, oh, you want to please, you want to please the Lord. And all the people that believe the Bible days, all they wanted to do was to please the Lord. But you know, after they are married, and then little by little by little, all you want to do now is to please your husband. It's wonderful if your husband is a real Christian. It's wonderful if your husband has the mind of Christ. It's wonderful if everything the Lord says, your husband, your husband agrees with. But if your husband does not agree with this, this, and this, and say, yeah, I know that's what Jesus said. That's what God wants. But me, your husband, this is what I want. And now you are saying, oh, Lord, I would have done it this way, your own way. But now this is what my husband wants. Uh-huh, you become a slave. Not a spouse, a slave to that man. The same thing, turn it around. If it's husband and wife, the husband knows. Here is the way to go. But the wife is saying, if you went that way, are you showing that you love me more than Jesus? Love me more than heaven? If I wanted you to go to hell and you really love me, wouldn't you go to hell just for my sake? No, sir. I will go to hell for your sake. How many wants to go to hell for somebody else's sake? Raise up your hand. You want to go to hell for somebody's sake? No. You want to know that it is not, you know, if you're a servant of your wife, that's even terrible enough. But if you know that this is the way, walk there in, and you know that this is the path to heaven, you say, I'm going to please the Lord. My wife, if you want to, you know, follow, follow. If you don't want to follow, it's better for one person to get to heaven than for two people to go to hell. If you follow this, the way of the Lord will get to heaven together. Give me a good amen. But if you decide that that's the way you want to go, this is the way I'm going, I'm going to get to heaven, you'll get to that heaven in Jesus' name. You see, the people that have got that righteousness from the Lord, and they say, these are the way to go, and they want to stand by that for the rest of their lives, that's what they're talking about. That thing is profitable. When you say you are going to follow the Lord, and then you are not just obeying people, obeying people, whether they're right or wrong, and then you become slaves of men. And then, they, you know, instead of having faith in God, you have the fear of man. And then they control you by that kind of fear of man. Look at that verse 16 again. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves, servants obey. His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. 
but God be thanked. Look at this, a transparent thing now. But God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed. Tell me, tell me out loud. That's the kind of righteousness we're talking about. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Be made, be the mage free from sin. You became the servants of righteousness. Free from sin, free from sin. That's transparent righteousness. That whether people are there or not, you're not, you're not escaping sin because of me. You're not avoiding sin because of me. The Lord, the Spirit of God is saying, that is sinful. Oh, the pastor is not here, I can do that. That is sinful. The Jesus is not around, I can do that. You're not a Christian then. You're not a Christian because of me. You're not righteous because of me. You're not holy because of me. You're not resisting the devil because of me. You're resisting the devil because of yourself. Because you have a covenant with the Lord. You know, some people, my wife is not there, so I can, I can do this. I can, you know, go this far. If my wife was there, I couldn't do that. Are you a Christian because of your wife? Are you a Christian because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? And you know that whether your wife is there or not, your husband is there or not, that this is the way to go. This is the thing to do. That's Christianity. But you know this kind of Christianity, you know, my husband is not around, I can do that. My wife is not there, I can do that. The pastors are not here, I can do it. My section leader is not there, so I can do that. And the pastor will never discover this, I can do it. That's not Christianity. Just spirit righteousness. I pray that the Lord will make us pure through and through in Jesus' name. Uh, so it says in verse 22, look at verse 22, and being now made free from sin, become servants to God, and ye have your fruit unto holiness and the edge everlasting life. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I'm reading here from verse 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, righteousness, transparent righteousness. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Are you content? Do you have contentment with what you have? You know, sometimes in the church, here is the position you have. Praise the Lord. That's all God has given me now. I'm, I'm happy. This opportunity comes and goes. This opportunity, I have to praise the Lord. I'm happy with what I have. You have a little church there, and God has made you a leader over them. You're not envious of another person, jealous of another person. And you have this congregation that are willing to hear the word of God, and they're hearing the word of God. You're not jealous of another one. Another person has, you know, multiplied of what you have. There's no problem. You are contented with what you have. That's righteousness. But, you know, he's got that. I must chase after him and get it. He is over there, I must run after him and, you know, overtake him. And he is uh, managing that, I must run after him and, and, you know, chase what he has. That's not Christianity anymore. But, you know, you are here in life that you even have food to eat and raiment to put on. What a glorious thing that is. Look at verse 7. It says, for we brought nothing into the world. And it is certain that can carry nothing out. You know how many people have lost their lives because, you know, I want riches, I want property, I want land, I want houses, I want this, I have this. Those who came out from school at the same time, see where they are. How did they get this? Aha, uh -huh. in the kind of church they are going, okay, I'm going to leave this place because they don't talk much about property here, about, you know, stock exchange, about whatever. They don't talk about that. They don't talk about strategy to climb and make money and succeed here. I'm going to that other place so I can have what they have. They are not chasing after righteousness. What they want is property. Other people is that they are working somewhere. And if that is the place God wants them to work, the salary is not enough here. I want to go to another place and have salary. And then when they get to that place, they are getting something they've heard of another place where there's, they are not going to have chance for Bible study, for worship, or for some doctrine. But there's money there. They're running there again. You lose your soul. Because you see, your aim and your pursuit is no more righteousness. Look at this in verse 8 and having food and raiment. Let us be there with content. Then it says, but they that will be rich by all means. I must get it. I must have it. I must possess it. 
they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful laws which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money tell me tell me again the love of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. And you know, many people, they say this is our church. You know, all that we have been teaching all this time, when are we going to change? So that now, you know, release us so we can go into politics, release us so we can do all kinds of business. Because you know, selling, selling this and that, this, it doesn't bring money. Why don't you release us who can sell alcohol? Why don't you release us who can sell this and that? Who, who is delaying you? I'm not, I'm not tying you down. Whatever you want to sell, you can sell. If you know that you want to be righteous and you want to make other people righteous, that's what controls what you sell, what you don't sell. But release us. I'm not tying you down. All we're saying is if you want to get to heaven, there must be transparent righteousness. But they want release. They say his church delaying them or restraining them from selling this and selling that and going here and going there and doing this kind of business and joining with unbelievers to do whatever. Nobody is restraining you. It's the word of God that restrains those who want to get to heaven. That's why it says, they that will be rich, they fall into a lot of things. Then it says, in verse, uh, look at verse 10, for they, for the love of money, is the root of all evil, which while some converted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I pray God will deliver us. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness. Transparent, transparent. And then in your heart you say, is there anything in this life I cannot give up for God? Is there anything so precious and so great that I'm tied down to it? That I love that thing more than heaven, love that thing more than righteousness, love that thing more than Christ. Is there anything that is so great that is gripping my heart, holding me down, that I cannot get up and then move on in pursuing the goal that God has set before me? When you think about it like that, maybe there are some, maybe it's money, maybe it's fame, maybe it's position, maybe it's power, maybe it's politics, maybe it is whatever, that you can do anything, and then you swear away from, from Christianity and from righteousness. I pray that the Lord will make us and say in Jesus' name. And now, O oh man of God, woman of God, it says, follow, I flee this things and follow after righteousness and godliness and faith and love and patience and Meekness, fight the good fight of faith. Give me a good amen. Yeah. You, you know, you have to fight your own flesh. That's the good fight of faith. And you fight your own propensities. You fight whatever is drawing you. You are not fighting me. You are not fighting our uh, uh, brethren. You are not fighting, you know, the church. You are fighting your own flesh. You are fighting the world. You are fighting the devil. Because the devil wants to tie you down to this. And your own mind, your own desires, your own aspirations, your own ambition. That's what you fight. So that you can keep in this path that leads to heaven. You know, the, the devil will dangle uh, something glittering before you. Not everything that glitters is gold. And the devil will say, if you fall down before me, I will, I will give the whole of the kingdoms of the world unto you. And your mind is likely to be tending towards that and leaning towards that. That's what you're fight, fighting the good fight of faith. And then it says to lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Uh, the grace to fight such a fight, not to fight a paper, not to fight a, you know, a lucy battle, but to fight the right kind of fight. I pray the Lord will give unto us. In Second Timothy chapter 2, Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. Just to just know, you know, sometimes you're in a place and you don't know what is there, it's iniquity. Sometimes they call you to a position. You don't know that there's idolatry behind the chair there. You don't know there's a doubt under the chair there. You don't know there's occultism inside that thing. I just, you know, just innocently, they just got into that employment. Innocently, they just call you to that position. Innocently, they just call you to that association. And then as you get in like this, lo and behold, the very foundation is occultism. 
and the very surrounding is a um, demonism or whatever. You say, this cannot be. Immediately you discover that. You say, oh Lord, what am I finding myself in? I didn't know this before. I thought everything was plain. They advertised it in the papers. They announced over the radio, over internet, and they, and they said, this is good. This will give you, at the moment, they knew you were a Christian. And then you made application innocently. We just got in there. And then they say, we're going to pull this one in. And if we pull him in or pull her in, she's going to lose all that faith in Christ. But you didn't know. But the moment you, and then they promise you, you are going to have this and this and that. And they sell you are receiving where you were before. Now everything is like more than double. And they're going to give you a house and give you a car and give you a drama, give you everything. And then you got getting like this. It's at this card that this is the very foundation of iniquity. This one will spread satanism all over. Immediately, you see that. If your mind is not attached to, you know, mud and sand and cement, if your mind is not attached to anything, anything on earth, and your mind is always, always in heaven, always with Christ, immediately you say, this is evil, you quit, and God will give you grace. Yeah. That's why it says, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Look at verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto every good work. Verse 22, flee also your full loss, but follow righteousness to see that's the pursuit. That's the number one thing in your heart. Your priority is if I'm able to have faith and say righteousness, okay, but if I cannot keep the righteousness except I drop it and have this, let that thing go. That thing will go in your life in Jesus' name. It says, but it says, uh, but follow righteousness and faith and charity and peace with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. I'm looking at First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. What do you mean from verse 1? First John chapter 3, verse 1. In First John chapter 3, verse 1, behold, what manner of love the Father has, has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I pray that will be yours. And every man, and every man, and every man that has this hope in him, purifies himself even as he is pure. Everyone that has this hope, it, it, it finds that in him, he purifies himself even as he is pure. But you know, if you never look into the mirror, Sometimes you'll go out without, you know, combing your hair, and you'll not know, because you never look at the mirror. Sometimes, if you never look at the mirror, you'll not see some dirt on your face, some dirt on your body. If you never look at the mirror, your back may be, you know, kind of stained, and you don't know. If you never look at the mirror, your clothes that you're wearing out may be all wrong, and you didn't know. The mirror of the Word of God is what makes us to be ready for the rapture every time and every moment. If you never come back to the Bible, all you say, I know my conscience, my conscience is right. My conscience does not condemn me. And you never look into the mirror of the word of God. I know my, I have a 